Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and in this course, uh, we, are, we are discussing about the different aspects of the uh, biotechnology and, uh, uh, and so, uh, so in, 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 in this particular unit, we are discussing about the recombinant DNA technology and how the recombinant DNA technology can help the society to develop the different types of products or what is the potential of the biotechnology. So, if why the so first question comes why there is a need to go by the biotechnology products or biotechnology approaches to, uh, to uh, develop the different types of products. So, uh, if you see the world population, the world population is increasing day by day. And as per an estimate, by the, by the end of 2050, there will be a requirement of or there will be a requirement of food for 9.2 billion people. That means, we need to increase the productivity of the food and not only the food, we also have to increase the, uh, the products for the other kinds of needs for the human being. For example, we require to produce the uh, cotton so that we can be able to produce the uh, sufficient quantity of the cloths. We can actually have to produce the different types of uh, land and other kind of things. Now, forget about the other requirement. The basic need of a human being is that it should get the fresh water, it should get the clean air and it should get the good food, right? good nutritious food. Now, if I want to provide the food for the so many uh, individuals, we have two options. One, we can actually be able to plant more trees, right? So, we can plant uh, more trees or the, uh, so we can actually have the more number of farmlands and other kinds of things. But you know that as the population will increase, there will be a scarcity of the space, there will be a, a urbanizations in the different uh, places and as a result of urbanization, it is actually going to eat up the agricultural land, right. That is what exactly happening in our country also, right. We are uh, expanding uh, the roads, we are expanding the, uh, the uh, ur urban uh, civilization places and we are making the new and newer houses and all that is coming from the on the cost of reducing the land for the agriculture. Not only that, so uh, that approach that if you uh, want to increase the productivity, you can actually be able to increase the more amount of agriculture land will not actually going to be sufficient or it is not going to work out. So, the other option is that you actually can increase the yield of a particular plant, right. So, if you increase the yield of a plant, it is actually going to give you the more uh, production, right. This is going to give you the more production and uh, as a result, you can be able to compensate or you can be able to increase the productivity for the increased number of people. Not only that, you can also able to reduce the losses, you can actually be able to increase the disease resistant crops or you can actually be able to increase the crops which are going to be uh, produced or which are actually going to survive the harsh conditions. So, we can actually be able to have the uh, disease free uh, plants or I will say disease resistance plant or we can actually have the plants which are actually can uh, survive in the uh, different types of stress conditions. For example, if there will be a loss of water or if there will be less water or if it is there will be a flooding, then these, uh, these uh, plants should survive to that condition. So, a stress bearing plant. Now, these two aspects 
can be achieved simply not by uh, by uh, the traditional methods of the uh, plantations or traditional method of cropping right for these two aspects you require the recombinant dna technology require to gen to, to modify the genome right and uh, uh, that can be achieved with the help of the recombinant dna technology right but before getting into the details of the recombinant DNA technology, let us discuss about the biotechnology and its scope and how you can be able to, how the biotechnology is helping the society to develop the different types of products. So, the first question comes, what is biotechnology and what are the scope of biotechnology? So, what is biotechnology? The biotechnology is a technological aspects of the uh, technological aspects of the biology where you are using the living organism or the product of the living organisms uh, for the human benefits to make a product or to solve a problem, right? In other words, you are utilize you are actually first studying the different aspects of the biology for a particular uh, organisms. For example, if we are trying to improve the crop of the rice, right? We are going to study the different types of biochemical pathway, bio, uh, metabolic pathway of rice, and different types of life cycles and other kinds of aspects. And then, technique utilizing this information, you can be able to develop the uh, crops which are resistance for the particular type of pest or the we can develop the crop which are resistance for the different types of diseases. So, in simpler word the biotechnology is the submission of the activities involving the technical tools and living organism in such a way that will enhance the efficiency of the product. Uh, the ultimate goal of the field is to improve the product yield from the living organism either by employing the principle of the bioengineering process, bioengineering or the bioprocess technology or genetically modifying the organism. So, you have three options, you have either utilizing the bioengineering or the bioprocess approaches so that you can be able to reduce the losses and you can be able to increase the yield. On the other hand, you can actually be able to produce the genetically modified organisms so that you can be able to have the, uh, you, know, you can be able to have the better yield from these particular uh, organisms. Now, when we talk about the biotechnology, biotechnology as I said is a submission of the different types of activities and that is why the biotechnology actually require the inputs from the different fields. Now, when we talk about the biotechnology, biotechnology requires the inputs from the biochemistry, biotechnology requires the inputs from the microbiology and genetic engineering, immunology, cell biology, structure biology, pharmacology. Because when you want to develop a particular drug for example, when you want to improve the yield of a crop or when you want to increase the uh, you know and any other such kind of activities you require the information about that particular system and that information actually will come with the help of the biochemistry or the microbiology. For example, if I want to improve the yield of a particular bacteria right or a particular fermentation process, I want to optimize the fermentation process, I should know the biochemistry as well as the molecular biology aspects or microbiology aspects of that particular yeast then only I can be able to modulate the different pathway and that is how I can be able to improve the uh, alcohol production or I can improve the other kinds of uh, applications of the, uh, the yeast into that fermentation process. Now, the question comes uh, what is the need and the requirement of the biotechnology? So, the need and the biotechnology requirement of the biotechnology is that it actually will improve the yield of the crop, right? So, biotechnology is, so what is the uh, need and the requirement of the biotechnology? So, biotechnology is a multidisciplinary area that develops technologies and products for the various purposes using the cells, living organism and the biological system. The various areas that have been improved by the application of newer approach have been listed below. You can actually have the biotechnology, you require the biotechnology as you know that the we require the inputs from the different fields 
to improve to to uh, operate to perform the operations related to biotechnology similarly the bio, the product what you are going to develop is actually going to help in the different types of fields for example the medical fields so medic biotechnology helps us the address tissue uh, address diseases with a better approach it plays a pivotal role in the modern pharmaceutical industries including the biopharmaceutical industries gene therapy personalized medicines and the diagnostics you know that the uh, biotechnology is uh, can require the inputs from the genetic engineering cell biology structural biology and so on and utilizing the, all these informations you can be able to develop the different uh, you know different drugs you can be able to develop the you can actually be able to improve the delivery of a particular drug right now for example you see that you can actually be able to do the target validations right with the help of the biotechnology you can be able to do you can do assay development for the different types of product screening and different types of diseases you can be able to do the hydrofluoric screening of the different compounds with the help of the biotechnology you can actually be able to do the medicinal chemistry so that you can be able to synthesize the different compounds and then you can be able to develop the different types of selectivity and all those kind of things you do so that you can be able to develop a better drug against a particular disease because if you reduce the diseases if you reduce the chances of getting a disease you will actually going to improve the lifestyle and as well as the life standard of a particular individual similarly we can have the genetically modified foods so for example you can actually have the different types of uh, tomatoes you can have the different types of potatoes beans uh, breads cheese and all that although we are not discussing in detail uh, in this particular uh, course uh, about the how you can be able to use the biotechnology principles for developing the different types of uh, uh, biotechnology related products like the beers rum uh, uh, breads uh, cakes and all that or the fermentation products uh, and so on uh, we are actually going to take up some of these uh, at the end of that particular course uh, or at, at the end of this particular unit uh, and uh, so what you can see here is that you can actually be able to utilize the uh, biotechnology to produce the different types of recombinant proteins or monoclonal antibodies and recombinant vaccines and so on now apart from the medical device uh, medical advances where the biotechnology has uh, contributed immensely in improving the quality of the human life you can actually also have the um, place where you are actually going to do the genetic engineering right all these are partially being done by the genetic injury principles right so with the advent of recombinant dna technology and the ability to manipulate the genome of the organism the quality and the quantity of both agriculture and industrial product have been considered for example you can have the genetically modified crops you can have the recombinant proteins and you can also have the bio bio process products then we also have since we want to uh, not only uh, in, in enhance the our own life standard we also want to protect the environment we also have to consider the strategy so that you can be able to reduce the burden on the um, mother earth so that it can actually be not going to disturb the environmental uh, environment of a particular uh, place right so for the environmental sustainability the biotechnology has also made the waste management much easier and more efficient with the newer techniques you have the several industrial processes that in developed for the efficient process of renewable energy such as the biofuels now what you see here is that how the uh, biotechnology is even evolved so that you can be able to utilize the different products right for example in the when the biotechnology was in the initial stage of uh, you know in the, in the generation 1 people were using the corn and producing the ethanol and then they were also using the uh, biodiesel right so that's how they are actually been in the generation 1 now with the help of the different types of advancement you can actually be able to use the cellulosic ethanol or the hydrocarbon biofuel biofuels right for example the petrol and diesel and then in the generation third which is a advanced stage where you are actually going to use the hydrocarbon uh, biodiesel and as well as the algal biofuels i am sure you might be hearing a lot about the 
biodiesel and uh, biofuels and alcohol based uh, uh, the um, biofuels and so on. And then uh, in the future what we are planning to do is we are actually planning to use the solar energy to produce the energy right. So, this is the way you are actually advancing from a very crude place where you are utilizing or you are putting a lot of burden on the agriculture product versus that you are trying to acquire the energy directly from the sun. And ultimately it, 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 these processes are actually going to help the making the environment more pollution free, you are actually going to make the environment uh, cleaner and so on. right? Then the biotechnology can also be used for the research and development. So, research is a place where biotechnology is very extensively being used for generating the different types of products or by generate for generating the, uh, cons uh, the, uh, the uh, recombinant DNA. So, that you can be able to ask the different types of questions. Uh, so, the application of the newer technique has ensured in the rapid growth of the research processes. Researchers are now able to uncover the mysteries of the life and an accelerated pace which alternatively help all the above mentioned sector of the biotechnology industries. Now, with these kind of advancement the biotechnology has helped us to produce the different types of products. So, what are the different types of products? We have produced the recombinant proteins, we have, we have produced the genetically modified organisms, we have produced the biofuels and we also are now utilizing the uh, recombinant DNA technology to develop the gene therapy. So, within the recombinant DNA technology or the recombinant proteins, we have developed the insulin, we have developed the monoclonal antibodies, we have developed the different types of enzymes and we also have developed the different types of vaccines and all these are developing and all these are making the human life more uh, comfortable and as well as they are actually improving the quality of life. Then we also have developed the genetically modified organisms for example, the Roundup Ready soybeans, Bt corn, Enviro pig, golden rice and the aqua advantage salmon. All these are being produced with one or other different types of features so that it can actually be able to improve the uh, nutritional requirements in some cases. It can also improve the ability of that particular crop for getting the disease resistance and so on. Then we also have the utilize the biotechnology principles to produce the uh, biodiesels, we have produced the cellulosic ethanols, we have produced the algal biofuels, biogas and biohydrogen. And sooner and later you might have heard that that uh, biotechnology is also helping in producing the hydrogen gas so that it actually can be used in the in place of petrol or diesel. And why we are doing so? Because petrol and diesel is associated with the lot of pollutions, right? And then we also have uh, gene therapy principles. So, gene therapy is a modern technique which involves the introduction of the foreign genetic material in order to compensate for the faulty genetic makeup of the organisms. So, all these products are helping in the different types of fields, but this uh, product list is not extensive, it is not exhaustive, it is very very uh, superficial and we I have only given the example of few products. Biotechnology is immensely uh, producing the products for the different types of fields. For example, biotechnology is helping in developing the products for the PC culture, right? You are developing the different types of disease resistance uh, fishes or you are improving the quality of the fish so that you can actually have the more weight, more um, uh, nutritional requirement and nutritional abilities. Then it is also improving the poultry industries by making the different types of vaccines, you are also making the different types of diagnostics and so on. And then you are also reducing the different types of the food grains so that you can actually have the uh, uh, yield from the poultry industries. Then it is also developing the different types of vaccines, it is also developing the transgenic animals which we are actually going to discuss in at the end of this particular unit. 
and then we also develop the different types of medicines genetically modified organisms drug delivery principles so where you are actually going to see that the biotechnology is also utilizing the uh, you know the nanobiotechnology principles and all those kind of things so that also is you are going to uh, study uh, in this particular uh, you know in, in this particular class and uh, then at the end we are also biotechnology also utilizing the different types of agriculture products so you have heard about the bt cotton and with bt bingels and all those kind of products which are actually been uh, utilized in the agriculture for example the golden rice so golden rice is a rice which is having the very high quantity of the different types of vitamins and so on now uh, the question comes for all these kind of applications one thing is very sure that you are actually going to modify the organism right you are going to modify the organism to uh, for a particular trait right for a particular trade or I will say uh, for a particular property. For example, if I want to produce the disease resistance crop, right, I have to produce, I have to modify the, uh, the crop in such a way that it is uh, going to be less sensitive for the disease, right. So, uh, that is a very, very essential requirement while you are doing the biotechnology uh, applications, right. Now the question comes why there is a need to modify the organisms. So you are actually going to what is the need to modify the organisms. So genetic manipulation of the organisms serves various purposes across the different fields including the agriculture, medicines, biotechnology and the basic scientific research. Here are some of the primary reasons for modifying the organism through the genetic manipulations. For example, you can actually be able to have the improve the crop yield. So, genetic modification of the crop allow for the introducing the trait that improve their yield, quality and resistance to the pest, disease and the environmental stresses. This can lead to the increased food production, reduced reliance on the chemical pesticide and the fertilizer and enhance relations to the chemical uh, to the climate change. And this is very, very important aspect where you are actually going to modify the organisms to overcome the different problems at the same time. Then you are developing the disease resistance variety. So, genetic manipulation can develop the crops, livestock and the other organisms resistant to the diseases, reducing the need for the antibiotics and the other treatments. This can help to prevent the disease outbreaks in the agriculture system and the improve the animal yield. And this is very important. For example, when you are not going to have the disease resistant varieties, right, you are actually going to provide or you are actually going to provide the antibiotics to the poultry industries. And that is very, very common that you are actually going to feed the hen or the uh, these poultries with the antibiotic containing food material right because so that you they should not get any kind of disease. Now this antibiotic get into the egg for example or it can actually get into the chicken right. Now when you consume these eggs which contain the antibiotics you are actually going to develop the antibiotic resistance and uh, that is very, very serious, uh, uh, serious problem because once you develop the antibiotic resistance, right, you are the same antibiotic when you will get a disease is not going to work, right. And if I develop a disease resistance variety, I can be able to take care of these chickens and egg which are does not going to contain the antibiotic residues and as a result, I can be able to avoid the, the antibiotic resistance. Similarly, you can actually have the enhancement in terms of the <coughs> nutritional content. So, genetic modification can enhance the, net, the nutritional content of the food crops making them richer in the essential vitamins, minerals and other kinds of nutrients. This can help to address the malnutrition and uh, improve the public health particularly in the region and prevalent nutritional deficiencies. Then you can actually able to utilize the uh, modified organism to develop the newer novel pharmaceutical products. So, genetic manipulation can enable the production of the pharmaceuticals, vaccines and other biologicals in the 
organism such as bacteria, yeast, plant and animals. This allows for the efficient and cost effective production of the therapeutic proteins, antibiotics and the other medicinal products. So, this anyway we are going to discuss in detail when we are going to talk about the application of the biotechnology at the end of this particular unit. Then we also have to study the genetic gene functions. So, this is something related to the research uh, re the related to the uh, basic biotech basic research. So, where you are going to study the gene functions and the regulation of that particular gene function and that actually can be done with the help of the genetic manipulations. Then you can also be able to develop the human disease models. So, genetically modified organisms such as mice with the targeted gene mutations are commonly used as a model to study the human diseases and develop the new treatments. These models enable the researcher to investigate the undergoing mechanism of disease and the test the potential. So, this aspect also we are going to discuss when we are going to discuss about the transgenic animals uh, at the end of this particular unit. Uh, then we also going to discuss about the conservation and environmental management. So, genetic manipulations can aid in the conserving the endangered species and ecosystem by restoring the genetic diversity, increasing the productivity fitness and mitigating the uh, impact of invasive uh, species and pathogens. So, this is very very important to maintain the uh, balance between the uh, within the ecosystem so that you can actually have the all the uh, you know all the uh, members of that food chain so that you should be able to have the control over the population. For example, if there will be a loss of the lizards or there will be loss of the uh, snakes right, then there will be an enhanced increase in the number of the frogs or the different types of insects and that eventually going to affect the uh, the crop yield and as well as they are also going to affect the human health. Then the biotechnology principles can be used for the production of bioenergy and biodegradation. So, genetically modified organism can be engineered for the bioenergy production and the bio uh, environmental remediation applications. For example, the bacteria and algae can be modified to produce the biofuels, degrade the pollutants or sequester the carbon dioxide. Genetic manipulation offers the powerful tool for addressing the various challenges in the agriculture, medicines and environmental management. However, it is essential to consider the ethical, environmental and regulatory implications and ensure the responsible use of these technologies. So, this is a very, very important aspect which you are supposed to adhere. So, you are supposed to adhere to the guidelines, you are supposed to adhere to the ethical issues so that you should not produce a product which is going to harm the society in a long run right now what are the different strategies which are actually been available to modify a particular organism or genetically modify a particular organisms so we have four different strategies through which you can be able to modify a genetically uh, modify an organism so that it is genetically going to be modified so we have the four species, four uh, um, uh, approaches. We have the grafting, we have the cross breeding, we have the genetic engineering, and then we also have the genome editing. So these are the four approaches one can actually be able to use. So number one, you can actually do the grafting. Number two, you can actually do the cross breeding. Number three, you can actually do the genetic engineering, and number four, you can actually do the genome editing. In the grafting, it is a hort traditional horticulture technique where uh, two, pro two uh, uh, plants are uh, stick to each other and where you are actually going to select for the better plant. Cross breeding, you are going to mate the uh, one good quality uh, animal with a bad quality animal and that is how you are actually going to select the better yield or better uh, traits uh, in, such in, in the cross breeding applications. Then genetic engineering, you can also have the genetic engineering where you can actually be able to uh, you know do the gen therapy and those kind of things. And then we also have the latest approach where you are actually going to use the gene and ed genome editing techniques where you are actually going to modify a genome so that it can actually be able to uh, take care of the defects and it can also improve the yields. 
Now, how we are going to do the grafting? So, this, these are the uh, different spe steps of the grafting. So, you are actually going to in the grafting, what you are going to do is you are first going to select the uh, root stock and you are also going to select the scion. Uh, then you are actually going to prepare the plants. So, root stock and the scion must be prepared before grafting. This typically involves making the clean precise cut on both the plant to create the matching surfaces for the grafting. So, that is what exactly you are going to do and the grafting can be of different types that we are not going to discuss in this particular tool uh, in this particular uh, course. It is essential to ensure that the cambium layer of the liver rootstock and the scions are aligned as this will where the grafting union will form. Then we also have the different types of grafting techniques. So, there are several grafting techniques including the cleft grafting, whip and tongue grafting, bark grafting and bird grafting and all these are very very important and they are being utilized for the as per the different uh, types of plants. Then you are going to secure the graft. So, once the you are going to insert the uh, scion into the root stock, you are actually going to secure this right with the help of the cotton. And then ultimately you are going to protect the uh, graft. So, you are going to cover it with the polythene so that it should not get dehydrated and other kinds of important thing. And then after that you are going to do aftercare and then you are going to protect the grafts and it is actually going to give you a product where this particular part is actually going to be responsible for giving you the fruit and this is the part which is actually going to provide the this is going to have the root right it is actually going to provide the nutrition and the water to this particular plant right so you will get the fruit from the better quality uh, plant and you will get the root system from the uh, from the more wild species. Then we also have the uh, cross breeding species. So, in the cross breeding species you can imagine that you have two species A and B and what we are achieving is that we are doing the cross breeding so that you can actually going to have the hybrid species right and this hybrid species will have some good qualities from the A and some good qualities from the B and they, they are actually going to be selected in such a way that you are they are actually going to have the good quality from the A and good quality from the B. So, first you are first step you are going to select the parental stocks and then sub, sub number 2 you are going to understand the genetics so that you know which part I have to take from A which part I have to take from B or in which way the I should do the breeding. So, for example, if I want to increase the yield of milk right and uh, the B is actually uh, high yielding uh, milk uh, species right. So, I will take the female from here and I will take the male from here right. If I have to produce the um, bull for example or ox right uh, and I want to use them for the agriculture purposes then and if this is a more powerful this is less powerful but this is actually disease resistant or disease resistant and this is not then I will take the male from here and female from here right. So, then you do the cross breeding. So, you will do let them put for the mating and then that is how you are actually going to do the cross breeding. Then the hybrid vigor is going to be produced and where the offspring is going to exhibit the superior co uh, qualities compared to the other plant and the parents and this phenomena is particularly noticeable in the first generation hybrids right. So, this is not going to happen in the second generation because you know that the Mendelian according to the Mendelian genetics it is going to be segregate right and ultimately you are going to have the uh, so its first generation hybrids are actually going to be as per your plant. So, second generation there will be a segregation so there will be a segregation of the uh, properties. Then you are going to do a selection and evaluation. So, you are actually going to select these hybrids according to your requirements. So, you if you require the more high yielding uh, uh, milk producing uh, cow then you should uh, select accordingly. Then you will continue with the breeding programs. So, depending upon the goal of the breeding program further round of selection and cross breeding may carry it out to refine and enhance the desired trait over the successive generation and then you are going to do the stabilization part. Similarly, in the third one you are actually going to have the genetic engineering. So, genetic engineering is where you are actually going to utilize you are going to act up you are going to over express a particular 
uh, gene into a particular host and that is how you are actually going to improve the yield of the particular crop. So, these are the some of the six uh, steps which you are going to follow and all these steps anyway we are going to discuss in detail in this particular uh, unit. So, we are not going to discuss right now. And then we also have the general overview of the genome editing. So, this is the latest technology where you are actually going to use the uh, different types of approaches. You are actually going to use the zinc finger nucleases, you are going to use the talons, you are going to use the CRISPR Cas and so on. And all these are actually going to use for removing a particular section of DNA from your genome and then inserting a new one right and that is how you are actually going to have the genome editing right. So, for example, in this case see this is the region which is problematic right which is not required. So, they are actually going to remove it right and then it is actually going to integrate with the newer gene. This is anyway we are not going to discuss and it is actually going to be uh, outside the scope of this particular course. So, what is mean by the recombinant DNA technology? In the recombinant DNA technology or the RDDNA is a biotechnology method by which the genetic makeup of organism is directly manipulated to produce the different combinations of the genetic material by inserting a foreign segment, deleting an existing segment or modifying a segment of the genome of an organism. The discovery of the restriction enzymes uh, by Werner Arbor or Hamilton Smith and the Daniel Nathan and the discovery of the ligases by the uh, Jeller, Lehman, Richardson and Howards provide the first step toward developing the recombinant DNA technology. The second step was the introduction of the foreign DNA known as the plasmid to allow the constant propagation of the modified genetic element. Both these steps were combined and the basis of basis of the recombinant DNA technology was developed. So, what you are going to do is with the discovery of the restriction enzyme, ligases and the basic principle of inserting these uh, recombinant DNA into a host, what you are going to do is you are going to uh, cut the plasmids right with the eco R1, this is the eco R1 restriction site and eco R1 is the restriction enzyme. Uh, so, anyway do not worry about this, we are going to discuss in detail about these. Uh, then you are also going to have the different plasmids which are that also you are going to cut and then they are actually going to have the similar kind of cohesive ends and the both ends and then you put the insert right. So, insert is also going to have the cohesive end on both the side and that is how these cohesive ends are going to integrate with each other with the help of the ligase and that is how it is actually going to give you the recombinant plasmid and this recombinant plasmid you can be able to insert into the uh, particular bacteria and that is how it is actually going to start producing the protein corresponding to this particular gene. Uh, apart from its uh, indisputable contribution to the basic science, uh, recombinant technology has also played a great role in shaping our life standard by immensely contributing to the medical advances, agriculture generation and the renewable source of energy and the pharmacology. The importance of recombinant DNA technology cannot be understated in modern life and it can be judged by the following examples. The Earlier several tons of uh, animal pancreatic glands were needed to isolate a few milligrams of insulin right. Moreover, the protect the protein isolated could cause the immuno reaction in humans. A similar problem was also been the with the isolation of the growth hormone. So, this is one of the very very important aspect right where so earlier when we were uh, you know when the people who have discovered the uh, and diabetes right they discovered that if you take the insulin it is actually going to cure the diabetes right. At that time there was no way to produce the insulin except to ex extract the insulin directly from the pancreas right and in that process you are actually uh, inserting an insulin which is actually foreign antigen to the particular ho host and that is how it is actually going to cause the allergic reactions right. And sometimes it also causes the death of the particular individual when it injects the insulin. With the help of the recombinant DNA technology, we have cloned the insulin into a bacterial system and that is how we are now producing the 
recombinant insulin which are non immunogenic which is non pathogenic and which does not cause any kind of allergic reactions. So, these recombinant proteins are now grown in a bacterial system on a large scale even the problem or the immunologic reaction have been alleviated by the production of human insulin and in this bacterial system. Science seeds are also successful in making the targeted modification in the plant to get the genetically modified crops and these crops have higher uh, disease resistance, salinity tolerance, drought resistance and the yield curve and this has freed the farmer from the worrying about the danger to their crops. Now, all these what we have just discussed is not happened in the one day or few years and so on. It is actually been happened because of the constant and rigorous uh, discoveries through the from uh, from last uh, 100 and 200 years right. So, let us discuss about these discoveries so that it will understand it will allow you to understand or it will allow you to understand the importance of the basic research and it also help you to understand the contribution of these individual scientists. So, the first discovery which uh, was given in your textbook is 1917 when the Carl Heckley coined the term the biotechnology right and he said that all the basic principle or the basic activities which will be utilized to improve the yield of the product from the biological system is going to be studied under a particular science and that name of that particular scientific stream is going to be called as biotechnology. And then in the year of 1944, uh, every McLeod and McCarty demonstrated that the DNA is the genetic material. I am sure you might have studied the classical example or the classical experiment of the uh, DNA is the genetic material. If you do not, then you are actually going to see some of the links uh, which are being uh, given on the YouTube. And it is very, very interesting where you ha they have utilized the different types of the degradation enzymes and because of that they proved that the DNA is the genetic material not the RNA or the proteins. Then in the year of 1952, uh, Joshua uh, discovered the plasmids right. So, they discovered the natural plasmids which we are going to uh, discuss when we are going to discuss about the plasmids in the later uh, part of this particular unit. The year, year of 1953, Watson and Crick actually uh, solved the structure of double helical structure of the DNA. So, remember that the DNA's importance was very high because of the every McLeod and McCarty that DNA is the genetic material. And because of this importance, the Watson and Crick actually solved the structure of the DNA so that they could understand the integrate biochemistry of the molecule so that you can be able to you know draw the principles so that you can be able to generate the informations. Then in the year of 1960, the uh, uh, Matthew Besselson and the Werner Harbour actually discovered the type 1 restriction enzymes. Then year of 1967, the Gellert, Lehman, Richardson and Hewitts discovered the ligase enzyme. Then in the year of 1970, uh, Hamilton O. Smith and Thomas J. Kelly discovered the type 2 restriction enzyme. So, type 2 restriction enzymes are the real restriction enzyme which are actually going to give you the cohesive ends and that is why they were having the very high applications in the recombinant DNA technology. Then in the year of 1972, Paul Berg assembled the first recombinant DNA from the bacteria into a virus. Then year of 1973, the Stanley and Cohen and the Herbert Boyer developed the DNA cloning and recombinant DNA technology. Then year of 1975, the George Coiler and the uh, Caesar Milstein described the hybridoma technology for the production of the monoclonal antibodies. Then year of 1982, the FDA approved world's first recombinant DNA therapeutic product. Humulin uh, developed by the Eli Lilly and Genetex, right? And that has revolutionized because this was introduction of the insulin into the uh, product, right? Insulin into the market for the treatment of the diabetes. 
then year of 1983 Karimullers discovered the polymerase chain reactions, then in the year of 1984 uh, Sir Alec Jeffrey invented the DNA fingerprinting that also we are going to discuss, PCR also we are going to discuss in a later part of this particular discussion. Then year of 1986 the first recombinant vaccine Rebovix HB for hepatitis B was approved for the human use. Then year of 1990 uh, the human genome project officially initiated which was coordinated by the US Department of Energy and the National Institute of Health. Then year of 1994 the first genetically engineered crop flavory severo tomato was introduced which was produced by the Carl Zine in the 1992. Then 1996 the Keith Campbell and the Ian Wilmot cloned the first mammal from an adult somatic cell using the nuclear transfer which is called as Dolly. Then year of 1996 the researchers at the Mona Monasto developed the BT cotton and the first commercially released it in the China and the United States in the year of 1996 followed by its introduction in India of 2003. Then in 2002, 2000, 2000, the Ingo and the Peter Bear developed the golden rice. Then in 2003, the Human Genome Project was completed. In 2004, the Avastin, Avastin is a uh, anti-EG, anti-VEGF monoclonal antibody for the cancer treatment was discovered. The year of 2006, the recombinant vaccine Gardasil against the human papilloma virus was received FD approval and the same year the discovery of RNA interference or the RNA technology was developed by the double standard RNA. And then in the year of 2010, the Robert Edward awarded the Nobel Prize for the development of human in vitro fertilization or the IVF therapy. And in the year of 2012, the Shinya Yamakia and the John B. Gordon discovered that the mature differentiated cell can be reprogrammed into the induced pluripotent stem cells and that is how you can be able to now have the potential or you are actually knowing the basic principle how you can be able to convert or you can be develop a particular type of organ and they, on this aspect many scientists are working so that you can actually be able to extract the stem cell from an individual and then you can be able to develop that stem cell into the liver or kidney or heart or any other such kind of uh, tissues. Then year of 2019 the recent advancement in the CRISPR Cas genome editing tool was discovered and in the year of 2020 the recombinant vaccine against the COVID-19 was developed right and you might have an uh, notice that while you were in the uh, in the uh, uh, lower classes right that uh, near India has developed the uh, very fast the COVID-19 vaccine and which that is how we could be able to uh, protect our people from getting the disease. Now when talk when, when you talk about the recombinant DNA technology you are going to talk about the different types of operations different types of principles right. So, what you are actually going to do is you are actually going to take a genome of a particular organism with the help of the polymerase chain reaction or the PCR you are actually going to over express or uh, you are going to amplify a particular gene. This is the gene which we are interested to utilize in the recombinant DNA technology right. Now, with the help of the restriction enzyme you are actually going to cut these this particular gene product and as a result you are actually going to have the cohesive ends on both the sides right. Same thing you are going to do with the plasmids you are actually going to cut the plasmid with the restriction enzyme it is actually going to cut give you the cut plasmid and it is actually going to do the sticky ends. Now when you put them together with the help of a ligase they are actually going to stick to each other and then you are actually going to transfer that into a bacteria and that is how this bacteria can be then screened for those bacteria which contain this recombinant DNA versus the bacteria which contains either the uh, uncut plasmids or the simple gene. 
once you're done with the screening you are going to have the clone right and that clone can be used for the different types of applications of the recombinant DNA technology so what you see in this particular whole scheme of the recombinant DNA technology uh, we are actually going to have the different types of tools so we have to understand the tools so we have to understand about the PCR we have to understand about the restriction enzymes we have to understand about the vectors we have to understand about the vectors similarly we also have to understand about the different types of procedures so we have to understand how you can be able to extract the genome uh, how you can be able to perform the polymerase chain reactions, how you can be able to do the restriction digestions, ligation, how you can actually be able to make the competent cells so that you can be able to insert the DNA into that and how you can be able to transform that and how you can be able to screen these and ultimately how you can be able to produce the protein from these particular clones. So, these are actually the two aspects, one aspect where you are actually going to study the tools, the other aspect where you are actually going to study the procedures into this particular unit. Okay. So, what we have discussed so far, we have discussed about the uh, basic principle of the biotechnology, biotech scope of the biotechnology and we also have understood the different uh, tools and the procedure what is required to perform the biotechnology the recombinant DNA technology successfully. Now what we are going to discuss in this particular uh, unit, so we are going to discuss about the host vector system, we are going to discuss about the gene cloning approaches or the procedures and we are also going to discuss about the application of recombinant DNA technology. When we talk about the host vector system, we are going to discuss about the different types of vectors, we are going to discuss about the different types of host and uh, we are you know that the host and the vectors are different as per the uh, different types of host right so it is actually going to be very very important to understand first then we are actually going to within the gene cloning uh, chapter we are going to discuss about the different types of uh, genomic library preparations how you can be able to extract the genome of a particular organisms how you can be able to extract the uh, PCR, how you can be able to perform the screening selections and all that. And then we also going to discuss about the application part. So, where we are actually going to discuss about the different types of applications, we are going to talk about the RFLP, we are going to discuss about the application to produce in, in terms of produce production of the recombinant proteins and so on. So, in this particular unit, we are going to discuss a detail about the recombinant DNA technology and uh, we have divided that into the three different types of chapters so that it should be able to it should be easy for you to follow the content. Now what we have discussed in today's lecture we have discussed about the importance of the biotechnology we discuss about the different methods of modifying the organism so we discuss about the grafting we discuss about the cross breeding we discuss about the genome editing and we also discuss about a recombinant genetic engineering actually then we also introduce you to the recombinant DNA technology what are the different types of uh, procedures and tools are required for recombinant DNA technology then we also discuss about the historical landmarks how what are the different discoveries happens and then we also discuss about the scheme to produce a recombinant organisms. So, with this uh, I would like to conclude my lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more aspects of the recombinant DNA technology. Thank you.